When working with DOM elements in JavaScript, a very common task that you are going to need to work through is changing the styles for those DOM elements. And so if you want to come and look, right now I have an image here, and you can access this in the show notes as well. And this image, because it's part of the DOM, is a traditional element. It's, as you can see right here, it's just a div. And so if I inspect this, and look at the HTML code right here in the browser, and I'll stretch this out so it's a little bit easier to see. You can see it's just the same code that we had right there. Now, because of that, we have access to add other elements. So we have the ability to add other kinds of attributes such as styles. So if I come in here and add an inline style, so if I say, uh, let's see, style equals, border bottom or let's say border right because that's what I'm gonna show you how to do here in a second and say border right 10 pixels solid and red if I run that you can see that we now have a border here on the right hand side that is red and so because we have access to this element to this image element that means that we can apply these styles. And so because of that, that means that we can leverage JavaScript to do that. So what we're gonna do is essentially just automatically do what I showed you manually right here. So let me squeeze this back in, I'm gonna hit refresh. So we have a nice starting point, jump into the console, and now let's start actually writing the code very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this laptop image. Now there are a number of ways to do it. This image has a site image class. And so for the sake of this one example, I'm going to show you that we can grab this using the query selector. So I'm going to say const laptop and then set this equal to document dot query selector. And then inside of the query selector, I'm gonna pass in the just the regular class lookup. So I know that it is named site image and that's gonna give me access to it. Now I can get away with this because there is only one site image on the page. If there were more of them, so if I had a set of thumbnails that I wanted to do this to, I would have to use query selector all and then iterate through them like we've done before. But right now I am 100% certain there's only one image, so we're perfectly fine to do this. Now that we have that set up, let's actually add our event listener. So we'll say laptop dot add event listener and I want to use the mouse over listener because what I want to happen is whenever I hover over this image, I want the border to pop up here on the right hand side. So I'm going to pass in the first argument, which is mouse over, and then I'm going to pass in E and our function. So remember, anytime we use an event listener, the second argument is always a function, which is the process we want to run. And here we have access to E and then e.target. Remember target is the element that the event is occurring on. It's that HTML element. So we can test this out if we want to with console log. So I'll say console log e target, hit save. Now if I come and hit refresh here, and hover over, you can see that it returns that image. So that is giving us exactly what we're looking for. But instead of just console logging it, we actually want to add our styles. So I'm going to say e dot target dot style and then dot. And this part may look a little bit tricky if you've never used this before. We can't use the same exact type of style calls. So I can't do something like say border bottom that wouldn't be syntactically accurate because function calls in javascript can't have a dash and so there is an entire set of mappings between the style names and those properties and what you can do in javascript and right now is going to be border right and it uses camel case just like this and so now i can 
pat I can put in my style. So I'll do something pretty big. So 40 pixels, solid red, and then uh, the semicolon goes at the very end. So assuming that I don't have any typos, this should all work. So clear here, come back, hit refresh. And now when I hover over that, you can see our red border appears just like we want it to. So that is perfect. And as you may have guessed, and as you, if you're following along, as you may have already done, we can add a pair to this. So we can say, because we have a mouse over, we also want a mouse out. And then everything here is going to be the same, except I'm going to change the red to transparent. Hit save, and I'm going to explain in one second why I'm doing this. So if I hit refresh, hover over, the red border is there, hover out, and it's gone. And so that is working very well. The reason why I'm doing this, instead of me just clearing out the border style on the right-hand side, it's because any time that I'm adding a border, and so it's going to be potentially affecting other elements. So imagine that you on the right hand side here, you had a body of text. If I just added this 40 pixels out of the blue, then it would look very jagged because I would hover over and all the text would just slide to the right and it would not look very good or professional. But by having it be transparent, what that means is that it's going to just be completely invisible. So those 40 pixels are there. And to do this properly, and anyone following along who is a big CSS fan knows that technically this is wrong because we would need to add a style up here and it wouldn't be very hard. I could just, act. in fact, I'll just do it right now, just so I'm following along best practices and so you don't come yell at me if uh, later on when you found out I did it wrong. And from here, I can add a border with zero pixels on the top, 40 pixels on the right, zero pixels down below, and zero pixels to the left. And we'll go with the same solid and transparent. And so if I hit save here and come and hit refresh, now if I hover over, this is all working properly. Now, technically, nothing looks different, but if you had this inside of a blog or some type of website, then you will be very happy that you did it this way because what we're essentially doing is we are reserving the space right here. So all of this space on the right hand side, we're reserving this. And then as soon as it gets hovered over, all that's happening is it's not popping out even though that's what it looks like to the user, it is simply changing the color from transparent to red. And so if you had content over on the right hand side, it wouldn't be pushed and it wouldn't be animated in a ugly jagged way, but instead it would stay exactly the same and you just have that nice hover effect. And so that, that gets in a little bit more into CSS, but because this entire guide is focused on how we can add and and update CSS, I wanted to include that. And that's the reason why I even showed you how to start off with this here and to have this border. It's really because when you need to be very cognizant whenever you're making style changes with JavaScript, you really have to understand how the CSS is working because you may run into some very confusing bugs. I have personally seen a number of websites that had that exact bug right there where I would hover over something on the page and it would make something right next to it move. And that just means that it wasn't set up properly. And if they would have done something like this, it would have worked perfectly. So in review, in this guide, what we walk through is the ability to connect our listening, our event listening in JavaScript, and we're able to see how we could add and update classes and update CSS classes throughout the web page.